it's showtime. Let's actually upload a freaking file. We have this change button here. Let's find that. Profile.blade.php. Oops. Profile.blade.php. This is the blade view of our live wire component for profile. And this is just the stuff we grabbed out of Tailwind UI. And we have this change button right now. But uh, if we're being honest here, this is um, useless because it doesn't upload a file at all. So let's get rid of that for now. We're going to come back to this. We're actually going to make, make it we're going to bring back the change button. We're going to make it look good. Um, but for now, we're more worried about functionality. So here we go. Let's create input. What am I doing? Input type file. OK, and let's check that out. OK, so now we have a good old ugly file input from a browser, right? OK, um, we have input type file. Here's how we do it. Here's what we're going to do. Get ready for how you do file uploads in LiveWire. It's not the entire thing, but it's pretty much is. Okay, wire, model, and then the name of your property. Let's call this new avatar. Check it out. Wire model, new avatar. We're pretty much done. That's all you need to do to upload files in LiveWire. Um, let's go to profile.php and then we'll implement this in the back end. So just like any wire model, we're gonna need to add a property called new avatar, okay? And specifically for file uploads, um, yeah, I could show you the error, but whatever. Specifically for file uploads, you have to add this with file uploads trait. I did this because I want the user to opt in to the file upload functionality. Cause I don't know, file uploads are one of those things like they are a security risk. There's so many little tiny security holes. I tried my hardest to cover all of them, but I still, I just would rather you opt into the feature rather than like, oh, I install Livewire and it exposes this endpoint for file uploading. That's not cool. You know, I don't want that. So you opt into it with use file uploads. And actually this trait itself contains most of the code to orchestrate file uploads. So it's funny, I, I built this feature with basic live wire tools like emitting events that JavaScript listens to and does stuff. It's kind of cool. Um, so that's that. I mean, that's pretty much it. I feel like, uh, what should we do? We should do, I don't know. Like, how do I prove this to you that this works? What's the best way to do this? Maybe when you hit save, Let's just DD this arrow, new avatar, okay? All right, we refresh, we're good to go. We have our wire model on this file input. Let's change it. Let's uh, set it to my face, okay? All right, so nothing appeared to happen, but if we hit save, whoa. New, new avatar is actually set to an object called temporary uploaded file. We don't have to get into the specifics. This is a very fancy, uh, thing that LiveWire offers you that basically behaves the same way as a Laravel uploaded file. So everything you're used to store store as from Laravel, you can use with LiveWire. It's, um, it's pretty great. It's pretty smart. But uh, I want to actually show you what's happening under the hood when we upload that file. Because I don't know, I feel like this is so anticlimactic. Like, there you go. File uploads. It works. It's done. <laughs> That's really it. It's done. Um, so let's take a look at the network requests. Now, if you recall, this is how LiveWire works with wire model, unless it's lazy. Like this is lazy, so we type in and nothing happens, but then we tab out and it sends an AJAX request to update that value for our component. Let's see what happens when we upload a file. So if I select a file here, let's select headshot.jpg uh, and I'm actually getting an error. Oh my gosh, why is this? I have it pausing on exceptions and this is probably just some obscure uh, this is probably some, yeah, Grammarly. Oh my gosh, my Grammarly extension is like actually breaking this. And now you're watching this happen. So let's see if I can refresh this page. Oh my gosh, Grammarly, you are the worst. You know, Chrome extensions are such a love-hate thing. Am I going to leave this in there? I mean, my computer is basically frozen. Okay, so let's see if this works now. I was pausing on exceptions before which is actually super useful. Okay, so I guess if I click the sources tab, my computer blows up. Um, so there's that. Thank you, Chrome. But uh, yeah, if you hit sources, you can actually hit pause on exception. And then when a JavaScript exception hits, it'll actually pause and you can do real-time debugging. It's super handy. But seriously, Grammarly? Like, come on. I don't want to deal with that. Um, I'm still going to filibuster so I don't have to edit this. Here we go. Let's look at the network requests of uploading a file. We choose a file. Okay. And select it. And whoa, so three AJAX requests actually happen when you upload a file. The first one tells the server, 
hey, I want to upload a file. And the server returns a signed upload URL. This is a temporary signed URL so that it's secure, so that you don't just, so that Liveware doesn't just expose an upload endpoint that anyone can upload to. It's a signed URL. Then the actual upload happens. There's an actual separate endpoint called Livewire slash upload file. Again, it's that signed endpoint. So there's a signature that uses your app key and an expiration on this upload. I think it's like five minutes or something like that. Then it actually does the upload. When Livewire hears that the upload was successful, it'll send a final request to Livewire saying, hey, Livewire, the upload finished. Here's the, the temporary file name of that uploaded file on your server. This technique is called side loading. I'm not going to get into it too heavily, but basically I took the way that most people handle uploads in a JavaScript app like Vue.js, like when I've done it in Vue, when I've handled file uploads, this is how I've implemented it. And I've just basically hid that stuff under the hood with Livewire. So it is using side loading. It's uploading the file to a dedicated endpoint and return, and it's just a temporary file. So it's just on your server temporarily. And it returns to that temporary file. And then all the magic is taken care of. You just pretend it's a normal Laravel file upload. I handle all the, the complexity of dealing with the temporary file, okay? But you do have to actually store the file permanently because, you know, that's just how it works. So so that that's a little bit under the hood of this file upload stuff. I think it's just kind of good to know uh, what's happening there. And the reason that it, that it, that I'm, one of the reasons that I'm uploading this to a separate endpoint is I don't want to tile up your, tile, I don't want to tie up your Livewire component. If you're uploading a big file, I want you to still be able to, you know, type into a field and actually have your Livewire component update rather than tying up the entire thing. That would be no bueno. Okay, so we have our file upload here. Let's actually handle it and do something with it. So inside of save, we can do this arrow new avatar. And I just wanna say that the experience inside of save right now, this is gonna be identical to the experience of a normal Laravel controller. So here's uh, the Laravel docs for file uploads and it shows a controller that handles it. You get request file avatar or request avatar or whatever, and then you can store it in a folder. Uh, we're gonna do the exact same thing. And if, uh, I wonder if they talk about validation, specifying a disk, yeah. You can store the file in a folder. I think these docs are actually wrong. I think this is wrong. Anyway, um, because I think the second, uh, whatever, we don't have to get into it. This should be store as. Store, you specify the folder, and then you specify the disk, which we're going to do with our custom disk. Um, and then there's lots of other things. This stuff all works, like get client original name. I worked pretty hard to make Livewire's file system mirror exactly Laravel's, so it should feel exactly the same. You should be able to just reference Laravel docs, you know, if the Livewire docs don't have enough info, which they should. Um, okay, so we're saving the file. So first we're validating and we can validate the file pretty easily. New avatar, you just specify the, uh, the property, and then just whatever file validation stuff you want. You can say, make sure it's a file, you can say, make sure it's an image, or you can say, make sure it's specific MIME types, like it should only be a PNG or something like that. Let's try that. Let's say, eh, let's, oh, we'll keep it an image, and then let's set the max file size to 50 or 20 kilobytes, okay? And I'll show you a little bit of error handling. Um, now it's gonna show a validation error, so of course, we need to actually handle the validation error. Um, we have this little, we have this little helper here for our input group, if you recall. So let's do that. We have error, errors first, and this is going to be new avatar. Okay. Um, so again, I mean, if you're losing track of this from the other videos, you could do error, new avatar, whatever. This is all native Laravel. Nothing, not actual Laravel here, right? just showing error messages, okay? So there's our, our validation messages. We set it to a max of 20 kilobytes when we hit save. So if we select a file and we make something bigger than 20 kilobytes, which this is, it's 30 kilobytes, we hit open and now we hit save and it says the new avatar may not be greater than 20 kilobytes. Cool, so we could actually even do this in real time if we wanted. Like, let's say you wanted to show the user that before they hit save, not a problem. We can do it like we do anything else in Livewire. We would do an updated hook, so updated new avatar. And then inside here, we would say this arrow validate, and this would be new avatar. And then let's say that we wanna make sure that it's an image that is a max of 10 kilobytes, let's say that. Uh, max of 10, okay. And now we refresh. Now I select a file that's greater than 10 kilobytes. 
and right away we get that validation message. The new avatar may not be greater than 10 kilobytes. So we're getting some serious power here. We're getting real-time validation on an image upload without submitting the entire form. There's some serious stuff going on here. This is giving us all the benefits of side loading, you know, but it, oh, it's so complex if you were to do this all yourself. So LiveWire makes the experience just dead simple. Like you shouldn't really have to learn anything new. It should just work exactly how you want it to. Great. Um, okay, so enough bragging. We've validated the image. Now let's actually store the image. So if we take a look at the Laravel docs, this is where we would get the image and actually call arrow store. So let's do that. So after we validate it, we'll say this arrow, new avatar arrow store. We'll put it in the root directory of our avatar's disk. This is the one that's symlinked, and that's just going to take care of everything. Now, because you don't actually want, we could specify an actual name. We don't, you don't want to store the file, the original file name. Like if the original file name is headshot.jpg, you don't want to store it in your server as headshot.jpg because you're inevitably going to run into conflicts with other people who have headshot.jpg. So store by default, just like Laravel, creates a custom hash file name. So it's a totally new file name that's a custom hash, but because it's a custom hash, you need to know about it. So here it is, stored in a variable. And now when we update, we want to set the avatar field to the file name. So I think our little pattern here of doing this uh, validating, getting back the validated data is breaking down because we want a little bit more control. So why don't we get some more control? Let's see if multi-cursors makes this somewhat fast. It's possible that it's easier to not. Um, okay, so we have username and then we want this to be uh update this arrow username about and birthday okay we also want to add in now avatar where we're storing the file name which is uh i'll just show it to you actually why don't we do that dd file name okay refresh let's upload a file and uh, it's actually not going to work because we set it to a max of 200 let's set it to a max of a thousand kilobytes so it's going to be one megabyte okay refresh and now i choose a file headshot Okay, open, now I hit save. It's gonna actually store it, and it's going to give me the new file name. So check this out, this is like VCMQ, right? So go into our file system, go into public, avatars, and now if we refresh, oh, come on, VS Code, public, avatars, there it is, VCMQ. It all worked just as we had hoped, and now we can store that file name inside of avatar. Okay, refresh, and uh, we're good, we've done that. Uh, actually, no, we didn't actually set it on the database, so let's do that. We store an avatar, we'll make it my little mug here, hit save, okay? And now we're not actually seeing the new avatar. If we refresh, we're seeing the old gravatar. So we need to update our avatar URL method to account for this new avatar stored on the user model. So let's do that. Inside of user, we have this avatar URL where we're returning gravatar. Well, instead of doing that, let's check for the existence of the avatar field in the database. Um, and if we have it, we'll generate the new avatar URL. And if we don't, we'll just use gravatar. Okay, we'll say storage disk, because we're gonna be using our avatars disk. Remember why we did that, avatars. And now we say URL, this arrow avatar, and that's the file name, okay? And that's going to generate our avatar URL. I love this because you don't have to scatter these if statements all over your app. It's like if an avatar set, show this. If not, show the placeholder. I like encapsulating it inside of the user model. It's just one of those things I like, I guess. Now we refresh and check it out. Bam, bam. We have that new avatar. If I choose a different avatar, a more square looking avatar from my Titan days, and I hit save, Look at it automatically updates because it's LiveWire, of course, like we hit save and then it updated because that's what LiveWire does. So uh, I think that's good for now. We have avatars done. If we refresh the new avatar shows that's image uploading. I don't know. I feel like um, I feel like we're pretty good. There's still a lot more to do. We want to talk about image previews. We want to, you know, uh, make this all look nicer. There's so much more to do, but I'm going to end this video for now. In the next video, why don't we wrap this in a test so we can see how you test file uploads in LiveWare, okay? See you in the next video.